Good afternoon, everyone. We'll give it just another second while folks are logging in. And while we're waiting for that, allow me to please just welcome you all to the Community Living Education Project's um, continuing Tech It Out webinar series. Um, we are always sharing possibilities for community connections, and we are really honored and delighted to be able to continue this remarkable partnership for this webinar series. Um, for today's program of Check It Out series, it's entitled Executive Function and Note-Taking Supports. We have an amazing group of presenters who I think you're going to learn a lot from. Um, and as always, I really want to invite you to please use our chat feature um, to ask questions as we go through today's session. Feel free to ask any questions. And if needed, we can also unmute anyone who may have particular questions as well. Um, so I'd like to just welcome, uh, you all know Naomi Leibowitz, who's been here numerous times over the last several months. Um, but I'm also welcoming Kristen Russell and Michael Graham from Advancing Opportunities, who will be speaking with us today. Um, Kristen, can you go to the next slide? And just a, a quick reminder for everyone that um, the programs are sponsored by the Community Living Education Project. You know that we go as CLEP. Um, our contact information, emails, phone numbers are all here on the screen. And I would say probably most of you have already signed up for our newsletters. But if you haven't, I'll drop that chat, that link in the chat box as well as we get started. Um, and with that, um, Kristen, Michael, and Naomi, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to um, the note-taking supports with Kristen and Michael. If you want these slides, we're just going to take one quick second. You can either take a snapshot with your phone or get these slides at this bit.ly, which I will put in the chat for you. Okay. This is who we are. Mike, unfortunately, couldn't be here with us today. I'm Naomi, Naomi, and we have Charlotte from, is our intern for the Richard West Assistive Technology Center. And we are all excited to be learning about executive function and note-taking, which everyone can use. Next slide, please. And I will allow Kristen to introduce her group very quickly. Sure. Thanks, Naomi. My name is Kristen Russell, and I'm here with my coworker, Michael Graham. Um, we are both uh, occupational therapists and assistive technology specialists. Uh, we work for a nonprofit agency called Advancing Opportunities. And basically what we do in a nutshell is assistive technology evaluations and trainings to help people either in their workplaces or um, in their schools or in their homes use assistive technology tools to help meet their goals. So I'll talk a little bit more about what we do um, after uh, Naomi finishes up the rest of our, our uh, intro here, but we're happy to be here, and you'll be hearing lots more from Michael and I in a few. Hi, I am going to keep this really short since you probably heard this a million times already if you have come to our series. We do, we have three main things that we do at our center device demonstrations. This is great when you don't know where to start, but you know some what you're looking for. And we will demo devices for you and compare and contrast. The, the fake features is a great starting point. Then you get to decide what devices you want to try from our lending library, which Kristen will tell you a little bit more about. But the great thing about the Learning Center is you could try all these devices free. It's free to anyone in New Jersey. And we also have a reuse center where we sanitize, refurbish wheelchairs, strollers, 
almost any device that is no longer in use and getting back out into the community. Next slide, please. Just to tell you, we have three more. Sorry, Naomi. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I went no a little problem. bit too far. Let me just try to fix that real quick. That's Sorry. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll it's get you back to the slide. One moment. Where were we? We were just going over our next section is open mic which is all going to be about you. So you get to ask all your burning questions about assistive technology. And if you have a burning question, open mic is a good place to ask it. Um, don't share names or anything with the open mic, just general questions. And then we have Another I'm so sorry. Clear, clearly, I'm having a little bit of a technical issue loading this. <laughs> really taking it sweet old time. So hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. <laughs> if, um, if so, I can always share my slides. Okay. I'm sure Michael's pulling it up right now. So let's see. Okay. You talked about these already? Yes. Or yes. Okay. All let's, right. Okay. And then... Just to tell you, we have a tech spotlight where we feature a specific technology. We don't endorse any technology. We just want to let you know what's out there. And these are the ones that are to come. Next slide. And All right. I will hand it over to Kristen. All right. So like Naomi mentioned, one of the things that our ATAC program in New Jersey uh, runs is the Assistive Technology Lending Center. So uh, the agency Michael and I work for, Advancing Opportunities, um, is the subcontractor that handles the technology lending center. So I want to explain this process because this is a really important um, service in New Jersey. Uh, first of all, it's free to any New, New Jersey resident. If you happen to be listening and you don't live in New Jersey, your state also would have an assistive technology lending center. And um, if I know Naomi at all, she's already looking up the link and she's going to put that in the chat as well. So uh, there are there's a website where you can look up where your uh, what your AT program is in the state that you live and wh who you can contact for the um, for your technology lending center library. So we call ours the TLC, the Technology Lending Center. And essentially what it is, is think of a library, but of all different assistive technology tools. So we have shelves and shelves and shelves of different assistive technology tools. So I put a couple of examples just to kind of show the variety of tools that we have um, in the lending center. At the bottom, there's an example of a keyboard that has bigger keys um, in the bottom center. Here is the um, Xbox adaptive controller. So this is an Xbox controller that has tons and tons of switches that allow somebody with a physical disability to uh, game on an Xbox. Right above that is an example of a spoon. That one I think is called the liftware spoon, uh, but we actually have another one similar to that in our lending center now. That is a spoon that helps combat tremors. So somebody who has a tremor, there's some like special technology in there to help keep the spoon level when someone's eating. And then along the right side, you see little Elmo. Elmo has a little wire coming out of him to plug a switch in. So um, a student, a child can uh, play with Elmo by hitting a switch and making him do his Elmo things. <laughs> Beneath that is an example of a head mouse tool. It looks like a pair of glasses, but it is actually a Bluetooth mouse that somebody would wear on their heads. And by moving their head, they would be able to control their mouse. And this little wire with the blue thing, that's actually how they click. That is a little... Um, type of switch that goes in someone's mouth so they can bite in order to click. So that's a really cool thing. And beneath that is an example of an ergonomic mouse that 
puts the hand in a little different position uh, that's more ergonomic. So in a nutshell, we have tons of uh, switches. We have a good variety of switch toys. We have tons of computer access equipment, uh, keyboards, different mice, lots of ergonomic equipment, um, and some augmentative communication equipment as well. So how it works is we loan equipment for four to six weeks. It's totally free. Like I mentioned, things are shipped to you directly um, in UPS. It's no cost. Inside the box that you receive the item in would have a UPS return shipping label that you just would need to affix to your box and uh, drop it off as UPS or schedule a UPS pickup. Um, so this is free to any New Jersey resident or anybody who lives in New Jersey, or I'm sorry, works in New Jersey as well. So this is the contact information. You can email um, the TLC at advops.org. That will go to our wonderful coworker, Asher, who runs the TLC. This is his direct extension. And this is the website link to our lending center that shows some of the tools. Uh, just a disclaimer that it's not up to date with all of the new technology. We've bought a ton of new equipment over the last year that's not on there. So if there's something you want to borrow, you can always call us up. We'll help let you know what we have and um, be able to suggest things that might work for you. So the whole point is to try before you buy. Okay. Naomi, I'm not sure this slide I think is your slide. Is there anything you wanted to say oh, here? Actually, no, I was just showing all the support um, supports for executive functions. Okay. Oh, awesome. That's a good little intro here. Yeah, okay, it was so, just an intro. Okay, wonderful. So I see um, before we kind of jump into things, somebody had asked uh, in the chat, it's yes, it is for anyone who lives or works in New Jersey is eligible to borrow equipment from our lending center. Absolutely. So you do not have to prove that you have a disability. All we're really asking from you is your contact info so we can be sure to um, follow up with you to get your loan back to get things re uh, returned. All right. So jumping into why you are all here, we are today talking about tools for note taking first, and then we're going to talk about tools for executive function. Um, so to kind of, or, you know, before we jump into that, I realized I forgot, I didn't do as much of an intro as I wanted to for Michael and I, I had mentioned that we do assistive technology evaluations and trainings, um, and that Michael and I are both OTs, but we're part of a group of people, um, who have a diverse background. So we have a, uh, a special educator on our team. We have um, two speech therapists on our team. The type of evaluations that we do, uh, we do assistive technology evaluations. So looking at things like computer access, workplace accommodations, assistive technology for um, reading, writing, note-taking, um, executive functioning, some of the things we're talking about today. Our speech therapists do augmentative communication evaluations. So that's looking at um, assistive technology, augmentative communication tools to help support someone who isn't able to communicate fully uh, verbally. And we also do home accessibility evaluations where we're, we go into the home or the school or the workplace and um, can make recommendations to make the environment like the entrance exit um, more accessible to someone. So I just wanted to mention those things. Okay, into the meat of things. So I have this disclaimer, and I think Mike usually, uh, Mike Morata usually will say something like this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on the soapbox today, and I feel this is really strong, uh, really, really important, especially when we're talking about executive function tools for executive functioning. Um, so the tool, which is what we all like to talk about, and what we're gonna talk about today, mainly, it's only part of the solution. With a lot of the tools we're going to talk today, the tool is only part of the solution. And a lot of people who have some struggles in this area are going to also need some human support that can't be provided by a tool. Okay. Because a lot of these are talking about habits, um, which just human nature are very difficult to uh, change. Um, so, my best advice would be to keep it really simple, to not keep always looking for the perfect tool because likely it doesn't exist um, and just uh, find a tool and go for it. Um, 
And I think for a lot of people, some of the tools that we're going to talk today, it's it we need some novelty. I think as humans, a, a lot of us um, need some novelty in our life, especially when it comes to talking about how we keep our schedules and how we manage our time and the tools that we use. And sometimes we just need to do a little revamp. Okay, enough of the disclaimer. We will jump in with our first tool here for note taking and I'm going to pass the mic over to my coworker Michael as he has a lot of specific knowledge on this uh this wonderful tool. All right. Good. Good afternoon everyone and thank you Kristen. Again, my name is Michael and I am an assistant technology specialist at Advancing Opportunities. So to jump into some of our tools for note taking, we'll begin with Otter Dot AI. Otter is a digital note-taking tool that empowers a student to record his or her lecture. And during that recording, the software transcribes that lecture almost in real time. So we recommend Otter to our clients quite frequently because it's a great tool for students with physical disabilities as well as non-physical disabilities. And it can also be a great tool for students who, for whom um, English is a second language. And for students uh, for whom English is a second language, it can just be an additional support to have both the audio input as well as the verbal input in terms of being able to see the transcript. It's a great tool for students with physical disabilities for whom note-taking either in the form of handwriting or um, typing notes might be difficult uh, or fatiguing due to any number of physical disabilities. And then it's also a great tool for students with non-physical disabilities in terms of the fact that it can be so challenging both to simultaneously hear the lecture and decide what's important and kind of uh, jot that down as a note. So one thing we should mention with Otter is that we always encourage our students to uh, request permission from the professor before um, recording the lecture per se. Some of the students are granted that accommodation through their college or university's disability um, support office, but even if a student doesn't have that specific accommodation per se, the student can always request um, directly through the professor permission to record the lecture. So like I mentioned, Otter provides um, transcriptions of the lecture. I should mention it can also be used by adults in the workplace in terms of recording um, a meeting or, or something of that nature. The great thing about Otter is you can add photos and those photos are kind of timestamped in terms of, for instance, a student could take a picture of the PowerPoint presentation or the chalkboard or the dry erase board, and that photo would be synchronized with both the audio recording as well as the transcript. Similarly, you can highlight text, um, you can add comments and notes. You can also search within Otter, and you can search within a particular transcript or you can search within a folder. So I encourage my uh, clients who are in college or university to create like a folder for each of their classes so they can search for a particular term within all of their classes, uh, within all of their um, class dates for a particular course, or they can search everything in their uh, Otter collection. Um, when a student goes back to review the lecture, if they're listening to the audio, they can adjust the recording speed so they could speed it up. So depending on how quickly they could listen, they could almost um, maybe listen to a one hour lecture in half an hour if, if they're able to process um, the audio input rapidly. It also enables you to um, eliminate the pauses and you... Um, the software is called otter.ai, and the AI stands for artificial intelligence. So Otter is able to utilize artificial intelligence to do a lot of things um, 
it has a feature where you can uh, ask it to generate a multiple choice quiz or a multiple choice question. And I will cut myself off here. At the end of the uh, event today, after all of our presentation has finished and we've answered everyone's questions, I will be very excited to do a demonstration of Otter in terms of some of these features. But at the moment, I will hand it back over to Kristen. Awesome. Otter is a tool that we're using a lot, um, especially right now we're working with a lot of college students. It's a great tool and I found a lot of use for it myself as well. Thanks, Michael. Okay, another great note-taking option is Microsoft OneNote. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Microsoft Office, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. OneNote, if you have Microsoft Office, you most surely have Microsoft OneNote on your computer, whether you know it or not. Um, it's also a free download um, as well. So it's a great tool. It's free. So how I like to describe Microsoft OneNote is like a three ring binder. Okay. So in this little image that we have, here's my notebook. It's called Kristen at Advancing Opportunities. That's like my binder. I have different color tabs. So think about the tabs as in your three ring binder, you can have those uh, section dividers that are colored. Okay, so if you're a college student, for example, you could have one for each class, but this is not limited to college students. We all have to keep our things organized. So this could be your personal things, or maybe you're planning a wedding or event and you want to have a wedding tab, or you want to have a tab for your medical um, information and a tab for your car information, whatever it is, you can set your own tabs. Um, in each section, like right now I'm clicked into the business 101 section, then I can add a new page. Okay, there's a button that's not in my graphic right here, but there's a new page button. And I like to describe that as you're, t you're opening your, your three ring binder, you're going to your section and then you're turning your page. So you have a fresh, fresh, fresh page to write on. Um, so with OneNote, you can um, type your notes. Uh, if you have a stylus or you wanna use your finger and you have a touchscreen computer, you can even draw things. There's a draw tab, okay? Or if you wanna be handwriting math, for example, which is more difficult to type, although you can type math in OneNote as well. Um, so you can type your notes and you can do the recording. So it's similar to what Michael was talking about with Otter. The recording and your type notes are linked together. So when you go back and you want to review certain things, you, you can click on your notes and go to right to that moment in the recording. So I think OneNote is a great option for somebody who mainly prefers to type their notes um, as, as opposed to handwrite um, and who wants to be able to add pictures. You can add documents. You could add a PDF document. Um, you could add your PowerPoint slides so you can see them on your page and then type notes on the side. You can search, you can use spell check. You can go back and clean up your, your, your notes after the fact to make them neat and organized and bold and headings and bullets and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so OneNote is a really solid tool. If you, uh, the other good thing about OneNote, I'll just mention, there isn't saving like you normally have to do in a Microsoft Word doc. Um, it's always saving more like a Google doc, which is kind of cool as well. All right, moving on from OneNote. Another tool is called Glean. Um, truthfully, this is, isn't a tool that I've had a ton of, um, I've used a ton, but I know that this is offered through through a variety of colleges. Um to their students. So I really wanted to mention it because it really is a very good tool. And if it's being offered by the college um, at no cost, it's definitely worth uh, reaching out. I know, um, uh, I, I believe uh, I have, a, I believe Stockton is one that, that orders it. That's kind of in our local area here. So Glean is a very structured note-taking app. And in this graphic here that you can see, if there's a PowerPoint that the professor provides, you can open up the PowerPoint. So you would see the slide and then you're going to 
you're going to be able to record the audio. So you're going to see the recording, like little sound wave kind of things. And that's over on the right side. And then in the middle, you can type your notes. So it's all very together. Your slide, your type notes, the audio recording. Um, and there's a lots of different labels where you can mark something as important, mark something that you need to review. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a, a little bit more involved. It's not the most simple. You do need to uh, learn how it works a little bit, but it's a very solid note-taking tool for those that need it. So that's called Glean. Um, next up is the Live Scribe. And I'm wondering if, um, Charlotte, are you around? Did you want to share a little bit about the Live Scribe pen? Uh, somebody might need is Charlotte in, in the, I'm searching for Charlotte. I don't think I see Naomi. Do you see is Charlotte? Um, actually I don't see her. Okay. All right. Oh, I believe um, she was here a moment ago, actually. I'm just going to, uh, I will double check while we're looking, but I, she was here a few minutes ago. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to intro it. And if she get, jumps back on, maybe she lost connection or something. Uh, I'll, I'll let her share a little bit more. The live scribe pen is a, also another excellent tool um, that is used very frequently. Um, live scribe has been around for quite some time. I don't know. I would say 10 years or so. Um, there is a new pen that was released I would say sometime in the past year, maybe about a year ago, it's the LiveScribe Echo 2 Smart Pen. Um, and uh, this is something that we have in the TLC. This is definitely something you could borrow um, if you wanted to try that, try this out. Uh, essentially, this is an option that is a physical pen. I actually, I don't know if you can see it with my background. Here's the pen, I got a new one. Um, here, I was actually just setting up this morning. Uh, so it's a physical pen. It writes on paper. It actually uses special notebooks. The notebooks look like a typical notebook, but inside the notebook on each page is like millions of little dots. And uh, there's a camera inside the LiveScribe pen that reads the patterns of the dot paper. This is some sort of fancy technology in the pen. And what it, what you do is when you would go into class, you would turn on the pen you would tap a little record button that's at the bottom of the notebook page, and it's going to record the audio while you're taking notes in handwriting. Okay, so for a lot of people, they feel very comfortable taking notes in handwriting. There's a lot of research that says that that actually helps us to maintain, or um, I'm sorry, retain and uh, comprehend the knowledge that we're being taught. Uh, so for somebody who really strongly prefers to handwrite, the LiveScribe is a really good tool to, to use. So how you would, so at the end of class, you would tap a stop button. And then what you're able to do is go back and tap anywhere in your notebook on your handwriting. And it would play the moment that it would, it would go right to that moment in the recording and play back the audio that it hears. So we've all like been taking notes and we get like, like part way and the, the professor has gone on and uh, we missed what they said, you could very easily go back and re-listen to that and add to your notes, okay? So all of these note-taking tools, I should say, are, are great for college students. That's where they're probably most commonly used, but they absolutely could be used in the workplace. Um, we all have meetings that we go to. Uh, so as long as people are comfortable being recorded, um, you know, they definitely have a place you're meeting with your supervisor. Um, you're maybe taking this to a doctor's appointment. So when you're home, you can replay, um, and refresh yourself, um, share it with a family member. So there's lots of different, uh, ways that these could be used outside of school, outside of college. And I should just say, I'm sure some of you are, oh, listen, I just, a uh, question from the Q&A. Are these tools for any student, just college? I would say mainly for college, typically in school districts, um, you're generally not going to be able to record is what we have found. I mean, there may be some schools that would make an exception, but generally recording is not uh, something that is frequently done. Um, so there, you, you may be able to use these 
uh, these tools without the recording, but the recording is, is one of the main features, but absolutely OneNote is definitely a good option for like a high school student to take notes, uh, just not do the recording part. Okay. A live scribe. Charlotte didn't come back, right? Charlotte. Oh, I, she is back I see here. Her, yes. she is back. I'm here. Hey, Charlotte. Okay. I was just sharing Hi. about the, the, the nuts and bolts of the live scribe pen. Is there anything you want to say about just your experience with the live scribe pen directly? So with the live scribe pen, it was definitely helpful for me a lot of times. If you wanted, you can even just do like little like bullet notes and stuff like that. And it'll directly like, like put your handwriting onto like if you were using an iPad, a phone, a tablet, whatever you can use. You have to actually Bluetooth it to the device that you're using. So that way it'll go to the app. There's an app that goes with the actual LiveScribe pen. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, it's it's gotten a little bit more complicated to use over the years, I think. And there are different, LiveScribe has different pens. Um, with this Echo, it's advertised to work in the notebook, but also an app like you can see in this image here. Somebody has an iPod, iPad, but a lot of people will do it with their iPhone. Um, and, uh, you can play back the recording, like from your computer or iPad, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it, it was really helpful for me in the beginning of when I was in college a lot of times, because I couldn't always keep up with the handwriting, um, with the, like with all the information that was given to me at the time, because I'm not very fast with taking notes or handwriting specifically because of my CP, which is really, it's helpful for me a lot. A lot of times I would go in, I would turn on my pen, I would push record, and then I would just like write a little bit, sit there, let it record more, and then I would write down more. And then I would yeah. wait, I would go back home, re-listen to the recording as I was being like sitting there then I would add more notes and it would do that it was really helpful for me that's a really good point Charlotte like I think for a lot of us it's hard to sit in a class and be absorbing all of the content while scribbling down our notes in whatever fashion we're doing it so I think what you're describing is like a happy medium where you didn't write down a ton but you wrote down some things and you um, put in the time and effort to then review it after the fact, but that kind of freed you up to like really focus on listening during the class. Is that? Yeah, because for it? me with, with listening and writing down, it actually, for me, doing that fatigues me quite a bit, just like doing both things at the same time. So. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. Charlotte, uh, just uh, Charlotte is the intern at ATAC. Um, and she generously uh, sh has, like, likes to share about some tools that she successfully used. She's an excellent technology user herself. So thank you for mm -hmm. your input there. And actually, if you want to mm -hmm. stay unmuted, um, I'll, I'll give a, a, well, you know, I'll let, let you go. I won't steal the, I don't need to hog the mic. Uh, do you want to share a little bit about Notability? Yes, I will. Um, Thank you. Notability is really good. It's kind of like the OneNote that you shared, but mm -hmm. it's more, um, it does, um, you actually can um, type as you go along with your, with recording. You can type up on an iPad, a phone. You can, It's an app, basically, that you can get. Um, and, um, it's really neat in every way. Um, this, you can also go back with this one and re-listen while it's being, um, done. Actually, notability, I forgot to say, you can actually go in and, um, write in, say if your math class was doing a, like a, an equation for class and you had to do it, you could actually use if you're using an ipad or if you have your phone and you have a stylus 
you can write down the math problem and do the math problem right on the device in uh, Notability, which is really cool for me, which Absolutely. helped me out quite a bit when we were doing math problems if I didn't have graph paper. Exactly. Excellent. That's great. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Notability, kind of similar to the other, all these tools have a lot of similarities, right? The, you know, we can do the recording, we can type. Um, I know a lot of people really love to use an Apple Pencil with this app in particular on the iPad. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of a mix of like you have some that the ability to handwrite like the LiveScribe pen, but you also have um, a lot more flexibility like in this picture here. This is like a notes version of a PowerPoint slide. OK, so the student could mark up with their Apple Pencil and it's all fancy and different uh, colors. Um, and I'll just sh share one little tidbit that I've learned this, uh, uh, especially I've worked with a lot of, um, nursing students who have really found this effective because there's a lot of PowerPoints, a ton of note taking, uh, things that we need to draw. So that, um, type of work, especially I I've had a lot of luck using iPads with, with notability. Um, certainly there are other apps like GoodNotes. That's great too. Evernote is a popular one, but I wanted to highlight Notability because it is very popular. It's pretty cheap. I think Naomi said it's around 15 bucks. Um, it's not an expensive option. I kind of think maybe it's gone to just subscription, but don't quote me on that. But it's it's not uh, it's not a super, super pricey tool. Is there um, anything else you I wanted to add, Charlotte? Um, I was going to say, I actually still have Notability on my iPad, which... Um, I haven't had to pay any more for it or any less since I've gotten it. So awesome. It's, okay. That's so, good and, to know. Yeah. Cause I haven't had to pay like subscription or anything for it. I still have it. Um, with, and, um, I also saw about, I know you talked about glean with the, um, for, uh, since when I wasn't on here, I was actually at full therapy when you had started. Oh, thing, okay. So, <laughs> so, um, but, um, I actually for that I um with Glean the college actually gave bought that for the students who wanted to try it out and it was actually um just started when I was doing my um my my second to last semester at Rowan they just actually offered that which was really okay. cool. Oh, that's good and, to know at Rowan too. Yeah, Glean seems very connected in with a lot of a lot of colleges. So it's always something to ask at the whatever the disability service office at a college is if they provide mm -hmm. this tool for because this yeah, that, they, Glean does have a cost. Yeah, they um they emailed those that were connected to the um accessibility services is what actually Rowan's um disabilities office is called now. It's called okay. um so um. And they offered out those who wanted to try it out first come first serve to try and figure Perfect. it out. And it was really good for me, especially when I was taking um, ancient philosophy. Oh, yes. Class. I'm, I'm sure and that's my a <laughs> my no taking was, class. It was. He talked and talked and talked and oh, just God. was, I was like, I would take notes and as what I could, but, um, that was like really hard for me, especially yeah. with him and how much he lectured and so, stuff so like that. Information. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your experience with Notability. Uh, one last note taking tool is another one that we have in the TLC that we can loan is the Rocket Book. I think this maybe has been mentioned. I know Mike and Naomi. Um, I think this has come up in some of the other webinars. I can't remember if it was Tech It Out or not, but this one is not, we're not recording on this one. So this one's different, but it's a reusable notebook. Um, so it uh, allows you, and there's, a, if you look on their website or on Amazon, there are lots of different styles of notebooks, there's some planners. Uh, you can see on this page, there's dots on here, um, but they come in different styles. They're reusable, so what you would do is you handwrite, and it works with these certain uh, frictions that are readily available. I think you can just get them at, uh, you know, Target, Walmart kind of stores, um, but they work specifically on this paper. You handwrite the notes. You have the app on your phone. You scan the page, and you can tell it with symbols on the notebook. 
uh, where you want that page to be sent to. So we can automatically go to Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox, or they have tons of different options. It can also just be emailed to you as well. So um, then once your notes are uploaded to your computer, you can use a damn cloth and wipe it off and then reuse your notebook. So it's very eco-friendly um, and it's a way to give you digital notes um, as well, but still kind of retain the handwriting. So some people like that as an option as well. Cut down on some paper. All right, moving into tools for executive functioning. So here is a picture of a pretty uh, messy college dorm looking room <laughs> just to set the stage. Um, okay. Oh gosh. I'm like really touchy with this. All right. So we're going to throw out like a bunch of different types of tools that can help with, you know, um, supporting someone's memory of uh, supporting time management, organization, managing your schedule and calendar, keeping track of the things that you need to do, planning, um, initiating a task, all of these different executive function, functioning tasks that, um, you know, most of us have some struggles with. Um, so the first thing is one, it's actually, I own one. I keep it right on my desk because, you know, I struggle with task initiation um, from certain times, especially I do a lot of writing as part of my job. So sometimes it's hard to get started. Um, so this is just a very simple, inexpensive little device you can get on Amazon. It's just a little cube um, that you could like hold in the palm of your hand and uh, has different numbers of minutes. So you can see this cube has a 60 up here and a 30 here. So usually it'd be like 5, 15, you know, 30, 60 minutes. So if you want to, um, let's say, focus diligently on a task for in this instance, I'll say 60 minutes, you just turn the cube and set it so the 60 is facing up and it would start a 60 minute timer. Okay. So this is nothing all that technical. I have a smartphone. I could set a timer on there, but there's something nice about this physical little device. I can just turn and I tell myself, I'm just going to solely focus on this one task until this timer goes off. So sometimes just having like that physical little tool it's just enough to kind of get me to buckle down. So I wanted to share that one. Uh, we, we do have one in the TLC, um, if anyone happens to want to borrow that and test it out um, to see how it works. On a similar vein uh, are different types of visual timers. The one on the left, this is from a company that has all different varieties of visual timers. It's called Time Timer dot com. Um, you could look it up this. So here's the little timer in here. So they have again, a huge variety of timers. This one is a 60 minute timer. So it's very easy to see when the red is running out and when your timer is about to go off. So you could set it anywhere you want. This one fits right into a whiteboard. So, um, this would be great to say, say you're working with a student, you're going to give them a 30 minute timer or maybe for your child. And you're going to say these three tasks need to be done before the timer runs out and they can check them off. Um, so I think that is a, is a very useful device for school and home. Similarly, this is just another um, time timer uh, you can find on Amazon, really inexpensive, uh, handy for many, many purposes. Okay, jumping to a little higher tech. I just wanted to make sure I didn't skip a slide here. Our smart watches. So the pictures I have here are um, Apple watches. I have an Apple watch. In fact, this is actually the watch face from my Apple watch itself. Um, so I'm gonna explain this a little bit. These tools, while very techy and like really um, popular right now, are extremely good tools for executive functioning. Um, so starting with the watch face, so on smart watches, you can set th what the face of your watch looks like. So each of these little things, I have said what I want it to do. So I always can see the time and the day, obviously, but the real key here is this middle section is going to pull from my calendar. Okay. So I can really quickly glance at my watch and remember, 
oh yeah, my son has soccer practice. That's the next thing that I have on my, my schedule. So it's just right there, really easy to look at. It's extremely easy to, uh, you know, use Siri and set an alarm, set a timer, say, remind me in 15 minutes. I use this, um, to, to help me remember to get on this webinar today because I wanted to make sure I wasn't late. So really good on the fly ability to set alarms, timers, reminders. Uh, um, okay, that's all I'm gonna say there because I could talk forever about that. In the same vein, uh, um, Amazon Alexas and Google Homes are extremely helpful for um, executive functioning skills. We use these really frequently. You can, uh, within the app, you can connect uh, your your Echo Dot to your calendar, for example, so that your your um, Echo will remind you of calendar events. It will give you a notification. You can set timers. You can set alarms. You can set repeating alarms, which are very helpful. So alarm to wake you up, alarm to remind you to take a break, alarm to remind you to get on a meeting, to leave your house, whatever it may be. Um, so and I just gave some... Uh, some examples here of setting reminders and repeating reminders. Remind me to check my email every day at 7 a.m. You set it once and it's going to go off every day. So it's really, really helpful. Remind me to pack my Chromebook at 7.30 a.m. every weekday. That would be great for a student. Okay, calendars and to-do list. So one of the things I work a lot with people is to get one to-do list and one calendar and really... Uh, avoid having, you know, three different calendars to, to, um, to try to use. So there's a lot of great ways to, to keep, to do this. There's a million apps. Um, to me, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're committed to using that one app. So it could be one uh, notebook. Like I just use a little notebook that sits next to my desk to put all my lists in. You can use the reminders app on your phone, the notes app, um, or a, a fancier app that has more capability like the Todoist app. Um, a, having one centralized calendar, whether it's paper or digital, doesn't matter, I think is really helpful. Um, one point that Michael had to share, which I thought was excellent, is for a lot of college students who use, their colleges use Canvas, um, you can actually connect in the Canvas calendar with your calendar on your phone um, so you have one calendar and it's pulling in all of your school stuff as well. So that's an excellent way to keep it all together. So you only have one place to look. Google Keep is another great tool. This is a free tool. If you have a Google account, you have a Google Keep already. If you just type in Google Keep or look in the little waffle button, you will see the Google Keep button, which is yellow, looks like a light bulb. Essentially what Google Keep is, is um, virtual sticky notes, okay? We've all know sticky notes. So here I have four examples. Um, you can, I have check boxes. I, I like a lot of check boxes. You don't have to do it in the list format. These can be a little note, uh, like remember the code to, um, you know, you could put a password to something or your code to clock in or reminders for whatever. I, I like to use these for like little checklists, like here's a cleaning bathroom checklist. Here's an example of a biology. Um, some students will keep like one little note um, for each class and write down their assignments for each class instead of having it all on one note. Grocery list, um, homework, lots of different examples. Um, you can have the Google Keep app on your phone as well. So you can pull it up there or you can have it on your computer or have it both places. Um, and one really cool thing for any of you who may be teachers or work with students or just use Google Docs in general, Google Keep is really cool if you open a Google Doc, which I'm just showing like the corner of the Google Doc here. Along the right side of your Google Doc, doc are these little buttons. So this is a button that will load up your calendar along the side here, along the right side. This little uh, light bulb button is Google Keep. So if you click that, it opens this side panel and will show you your Google Keep notes, okay? So this was a really great thing during virtual learning, which thankfully uh, we don't have to worry about right now, but this could be, um, let's say a student is working on their Google Doc and um, on the right side could be a list of a writer's checklist 
or a list of transition words, because maybe that's something that they're learning or their spelling words on the list. So it's really great. It like puts it right together, nice and neat. Okay, so we don't have too much time. So I'm gonna cruise through. Visuals, I'm like super big on visuals. I use them a lot personally. Um, any time that we can like offload something from our head and put in a checklist so we don't have to remember like what are all the things I need to pack up each morning? What's my morning, uh, you know, what are all the chores that I need to do in the morning? And I'm always running through and trying to remember what I forgot. Just make it visual that it's not just for our kids when they're learning, you know, their bedtime routine. This can be for anybody. So I love some of the products that you can find on Amazon, um, like reusable, um, reusable sticky notes. You know, I have a whole little stack. I, I use them to help me keep track of my work stuff. I was seeing if I could find one here, but um, I have them like posted on my wall. There's a, lots of magnetic uh, whiteboard things to put on your fridge to that you could use for visuals. So don't forget about that. And I, I always encourage um, college students to maybe have like a visual of a calendar on their wall to show when are your big projects due? When are your big tests due? So you can kind of see a month at a glance so you're not caught off guard when you know you have two tests and a project due in the same week. Um, let me just see how much. Okay, oh, we're almost done here. Okay, I... Uh, I'm not sure if this is Kanban or Kanban, to be perfectly honest, but I'm going to call it Kanban because <laughs> it's funner. Um, it's more fun, I should say. This is uh, like a strategy that I think some businesses would use, um, but it's like a super simple concept of having three columns. I, I think sometimes I've seen it as four, and typically it would be, here are your to-do, here are your to-do things that you would... Um, you could write down, like you could make this, you know, a poster, but I, I love the visual of like on the wall, there's three columns you're putting on a post-it note, all the things that need to be done. You're moving them into this in progress done, and then you're moving them to the done um, column here. So this could be, let's say a student has a, a big project with a lot of different steps. You could break down the steps into, you know, different um parts and put them on a, uh, a sticky note and move them along. So helping someone just a really concrete way of, of breaking down a task. Um, and I wanted to include noise canceling headphones. I think these are incredibly useful tools for a lot of people to help people focus. Um, even if there's not a ton of, of background noise, it really can just kind of shut out the world and really help someone focus. They can be quite pricey. Um, like if you're looking at the Bose ones or the Sony, but there are lesser expen expensive ones. Um, so I think that's a good tool, uh, to use. I could see that being used, you know, in a classroom or when you're a student, student working in the library, if, or if you're working from home and you have other humans in your house, um, that being said, some people really do focus better with some background noise. So uh, it's not for everyone, but it can be helpful. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Michael for our last slide, and then we'll see if we have time for questions. Thank you, Kristen. So this slide discusses the Pomodoro technique, which is itself kind of a no-tech strategy for time management and task initiation and focus. So the Pomodoro technique simply suggests that you try to take a large project, for instance, and kind of subdivide it into smaller, more manageable subtasks or chunks, if you will, and then work on those smaller tasks for 25 minutes in a very focused manner and then take a five minute break and really just um, relax yourself for those five minutes and then jump back into another 25 minute session of focused work. And then after four of the quote unquote Pomodoros, uh, four of the um, 25 minute sessions, then take a longer break. So what does this have to do with assistive technology? Um, Quite simply, there's a Google Chrome extension called Marinara Pomodoro Assistant, which can help you implement this technique. And like Kristen said earlier in the presentation, you could simply set your 
uh, timer or your watch or your smartphone for the 25 minute um, focus period and then the five minute break. Uh, but the benefit of this Chrome extension is that it's constantly um, assisting you. Like after one session, you don't have to reset uh, the timer per se. It just um, does it for you, if that makes sense. Another great tool is the uh, Microsoft uh, Focus tool, which could be used um, to implement the Pomodoro technique, or it could simply help you uh, focus on a task. And this Microsoft Focus tool simply silences some of the notifications and pop-ups that might occur on your uh, computer. So it's both kind of a timer as well as a way to um, facilitate focus by eliminating some distractions. So I will hand it back over to Kristen. Sure. I was actually just typing an answer to a question somebody posted. What do you recommend for to-do lists and calendars that integrate best with Google for high school students in Chromebook aside from Google Keep? Um, I, you know, if somebody's using Google and that's like their home base for things, I would probably just use the Google Calendar. Um, there are a lot of different calendar apps out there, but I would, you know, I, I think just keep it simple. Like I'm often using either the Google calendar or if someone is doing using their iPhone or an iPad, I'll just use the, the Apple calendar app. Um, if there's something that's not working about that calendar, then you can look at third party um, kind of things. I know a lot of people use like the Cozy, C-O-Z-I calendar app, um, but I would probably stick to Google. I don't know if anybody else has any answers for that. If anybody has any questions, um, feel free to type them in. And why don't we, Michael, do you want to share your screen? And we'll use our last three minutes. We're, we'll we'll uh, just end with a little visual of um, Otter and we'll see if any questions. Uh, anything's come in. But I'll just say thank you. If any of you need to drop off right at one, thank you all for listening to us. I hope you took one or two things away that you can try for yourself or your child or your student or whoever you're um, working with. So thank you. Can everyone uh, see my screen? Yep. Yes, you're good, Michael. Excellent. So I am in Otter which is one of the tools we discussed. And I just want to give a demonstration in our last few minutes here. Um, so one thing I should have mentioned more forcefully is that one of the great things about Otter is the search feature. So instead of having to uh, review a 90 minute lecture, the student can just search for the particular topic that he or she wants to review. So to jump into it, to record a lecture, the student would hit this blue record button. The moon is about 384,000 kilometers away from the earth. The moon has one sixth the gravity of Earth. So I hit the, the stop button, and now it's kind of um, processing uh, and transcribing. Um, so we'll see how quickly that process goes. Um, but one cool feature I want to uh, share is this ability to um, ask questions of Otter. So please, and no promises whether this will work or not, um, please generate a multiple choice question. Um, 
Um, generate a multiple. Okay, so what is the gravity uh, on the moon compared to Earth when the moon is 384,000 kilometers away? Um, so we are right at about one o'clock. Um, I will um, cut myself off here, but just wanted to share with you that Otter really has some cool artificial intelligence features, which can assist students with both note-taking as well as studying and test preparation. That's very cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that. I'm sure we're going to have many, many more options uh, as AI develops um, for how these tools can help us. So thank you all for joining us and um get the slides. If you have any questions, you can always follow up. Our email addresses are on the link for the slideshow presentation. And um, we'll see you at the next yes. Tech It Out in a couple months. We're talking about um, computer access, which is my favorite thing to talk about. So we'll be back. <laughs> uh, Kristen and Michael, Naomi and Charlotte, thank you all so much. That was Fantastic. And I've been taking notes. Fury has learned so much. That was really valuable. Um, so thank you all for your time. And I just want to remind everyone that the recording of today's program will be available. And so tomorrow, we will be sending out to everyone. Um, the uh, We'll send you again the link uh, for the slides in case you didn't catch that. We'll send you a link to the recording of today's program um, to everyone who registered. That way they have that this resource if they weren't able to join us today. Um, and we'll also be including with that a link to an evaluation. So as always, we really welcome your feedback. And, and although I can't see how these programs can be improved anymore because these are, have been so valuable and you all did such a fantastic job and it's such useful, meaningful information to be sharing. So thank you again for your time. Um, Naomi, is there anything that you need to share or highlight before we wrap up? Um, no, but this was really, really wonderful. I just want to thank Kristen and Michael for joining us and sharing so much wonderful information with us. Anyway. And Charlotte, of course. For thank you. And Naomi, I did... Um, because someone asked, I realized I, I didn't get to pop this in the chat box, but I just will remind everyone that on October 5th, we do have an open mic session scheduled. So you'll all get those notices as well. We always add you to our distribution list. But there were some questions about, um, is there an opportunity to learn how to use some of these tools? And Naomi, correct me if I'm wrong, but the open mic session is a good spot for that, correct? Um. That is more general information. Okay. It's not about using a specific tool. Okay. We, ATAC. Okay, go ahead, Kristen. I was I was just gonna say uh our our ATAC program, Mike Mike and Naomi's program offers uh tell me if I'm out of line here, Naomi, but uh, they have a subscription for anybody in the state of New Jersey to access for ATIA webinars. Um, I'm sure yes. that info is on their website. Those yes. ATIA webinars are excellent. And this is totally free. They, they cost money, but it's free through our ATAC program, which is huge. So these are like legitimate continuing education courses. There's tons of them. They're nationally recognized mm -hmm. speakers. Um, they're very, very good. That's where I, where I would definitely go. But I would also just go to YouTube. If you're le like, how do I use Google Keep or how do I use Notability? There's tons of great YouTube tutorials um, that you can go to for sure. Fantastic. Um, Naomi, I, since we are wrapping up, if you could send to me or Melanie, the link for the webinars that were just mentioned um, that Kristen just highlighted. I'll be sure Actually, to share that with it's everyone. On, it's on the presentation. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So it was in the slide deck. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. And if so, people um, 
could sign up for and they could view um, ATI webinars all day long. Usually there's a cost of $45 to them, but we will give you a special code and the cost will go down to zero. Oh, fantastic. Um, Kristen, are you pulling that up or no? Oh, um, sorry, I thought you were. That's okay. I thought you were. I thought no, I, 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 actually, I actually was just looking to see what slide that was on. I don't know if you know, Naomi. Um, I don't buy it. Is oh, you slide, know what? But... That's that slide is is a hidden slot is a hidden slide I think um oh, okay I was gonna say I didn't see that I don't think I recalled hearing that but you know it's I'm okay gonna see if I can Google it real quick Free. oh thanks, actually okay we I can hide it okay awesome so I mean, folks if you want to if you can hang on for a minute and grab that I'll also be sure um to include that when we send out the recording but we certainly understand if you need to sign off that no there, there's the oh. there's the link in the chat um, thank you thank you okay yeah if you have the um it's in the chat box folks for those who are still here you can grab that link now and we'll share it again as well i'm going to make sure we um save all of these and we'll include that with the follow-up email tomorrow um so with that thank you all enjoy the uh beautiful weather today and have a good couple of weeks. And I know Naomi will be seeing you again very soon. Thank yes, you all for thank joining you. everyone and have a great rest of your day. Take thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all.